Look at how tiny this light is. I mean, come on. It basically fits in the palm of my hand. But don't let the size fool you because this light is freaking bright. I get asked a lot about lighting and well, in today's video, I'm taking you behind the scenes on how I created this image here. Now, this image is a little different from what you normally see from me in my bright and airy portfolio, but I had so much fun getting creative with this scene and I'm gonna give you a full breakdown. This video is sponsored by Nanlight and they were so kind to give me a couple of new pieces for me to test out and experiment with in the studio. I'm also going to share a tool with you that will instantly help you add more visual interest to your photos and something that you can get super creative with. Now let me just firstly introduce you to the Nanolite Forza 60B which is a bicolor monolite LED light and has an amazing color range of 2700 to 6500 Kelvin. Now I primarily shoot at 5600 Kelvin which mimics natural daylight but because I want to go for something more moody in this image I'm going to be shooting at 2700 Kelvin for those warmer tones. Now this light is also portable so you can run it off a battery adapter or plug it into your wall so if you're heading out on location a lot this becomes really handy. Now the product that I wanted to shoot for this scene is the Replica Jazz Club perfume and I got this for Christmas as soon as I saw it I was like I need to take a photo with this product. So I started to gather some inspo images of what a jazz club would look like and I knew I wanted to go for something like moody and smoky. And the key to bringing this scene to life is all in the lighting so I'm going to show you a very cool piece of gear that really brought this photo to life for me but more on that in a minute. Now before we get stuck into the behind the scenes if you're someone who wants to enter the world of product photography and build a career in this incredible industry make sure to go and check out my online course become a brand photographer where I equip you with all the tools you need to build your photography skills and also run a profitable and sustainable photography business. There are more behind the scenes tutorials, Photoshop tutorials specific for product photography, my whole process on how to plan a shoot along with heaps of business education to help you book consistent income as a photographer. So I'll leave a link to that in the description box below and you can use the code YouTube for 10% off of course, if you have any questions on the course, you can email me, send me a DM on Instagram and we can chat. But for now, let's get stuck into the behind the scenes. So the first thing we're gonna do is style our scene. I've got my product here, Replica Perfume. Now for our backdrop, we're using this kind of like red, moody vinyl backdrop from Club Backdrops. And then I've just got a large piece of acrylic that is gonna give a really nice glassy reflection to the photo. Now I've got some peach iced tea here that's going to be a substitute for whiskey because you know, we're about making this affordable. <laughs> uh, now the first thing we're gonna do is fill up the decanter with this and also our glass as well. Now for the glass, we're gonna be adding a couple of fake acrylic ice cubes. These are just from Amazon, really cheap, and this way your ice cubes don't melt while you're shooting. All right, now for the styling, I'm gonna keep this pretty simple. Put that back on. And there is actually a little bit of dust on the decanter. I like that. Um, it's been sitting on my shelf and I kind of like the, the dusty vibe for this old jazz club mood that we're going for. Be facing it this way, just slightly on an angle there. Now there are hints of vanilla in this perfume as well. So I've got some vanilla sticks here and I'm just gonna be placing those just coming out from the back of our perfume bottle. Put that there, move that a little bit there. All right, let's get to our lighting. Now I'm gonna take photos as I add more lights to this scene so that you can see 
the difference that different lighting techniques will make. Now our key light here is the Nanolite Forza 60B. And for the moment, I don't have any modifier on it. It's at 100% um, power and at 2700 Kelvin. So it's on a little bit of the warmer side. Now I've turned all my other lights off. My curtains are completely closed. There's no other light getting in. And I'm gonna take this first shot, just showing our Forza 60B as it is. Now you can see on the photo here, it doesn't complement the glassware, it doesn't complement the perfume bottle that well, so we've got a little bit to go here. So I've got a Nanolite Pavo tube on the right hand side here, and this is gonna give a really nice edge light to the right hand side of my scene and the right side of this glass. So I'm gonna switch that on. And this is also at 2700 Kelvin to match the Nanolite Forza 60B. So let's take that shot. So we've got a little bit more light on that glassware. It's still not where I want it to be though. So we have another Nanolite Pava tube here, and this is going to give a nice top down light to the decanter and a little bit of the perfume as well. So we're going to switch that on. And again, this is at 2700 Kelvin. And we're gonna take that shot. So this Pavo tube here provides a really beautiful top down light which is hitting the top and edge of this decanter and that kind of mimics a light that you would find in a bar. Now we can make this scene even better by using the Nanlight projection attachment. This is a very cool tool to use because you can cast different types of lighting effects and shadows onto your scene. So this acts as a gobo which is a go between object. So I'm gonna attach this first and then I'll show you what I mean. So when you have the projection attachment on, you just want to change your amount from the light to the projection attachment. So this is where the stand was originally and now we're just going to place the projection mount on the stand itself. Now this is the device where you place your gobo. So this is what it looks like and there are so many different patterns that you get with the kit. You also get this little book as well where you can store your gobos. Such a cool idea. Absolutely love it. So we're going to be using this one for this scene. I love how it's got that kind of design here. And I'll show you what this looks like. So we just insert it there like that. And then there's this little slot here at the top where you just place it in like that and it clicks in. So let's have a quick look at some of the gobos that come with the projection attachment. Now there's nothing in it right now and we're going to pop the one I'm going to use in for the scene into there. And you can see it's very sharp, very much in focus, but we can also change that as well. Now this little lever here on the bottom edge of the attachment controls your focus. So at the moment it's very sharp and if we move that to the back, you can see it creates a really beautiful blur effect. And that's the kind of look that I'll be going for in this scene today. And then with these handles here, we can control how much of the light we want to see. Let's have a look at some of the other gobos. Now there's a couple of different window gobos in the kit as well. So if you want to create that, you know, by the window kind of scene, these are perfect. And let's blur that out a little bit. There's also an effects mode on this light as well. So if you're doing video and motion, this is a really cool feature. So now that we have our projection attachment on, I'm gonna take the shot. Okay, now there's something else I wanna add into this scene. Now to give that more of a jazz vibe to this scene, I'm gonna be using some atmosphere spray. Now you can use a fog machine, you can use like a fake cigar smoke, anything like that, but I did have this on hand. So what we're gonna do is give it a shake and spray it onto our scene and take the shot. Mm -hmm. 
So let's have a quick look at the before and after of this shot. So this is before I did anything. This is a completely raw photo. And this is after I retouched. So I've added in some sparkles. I've really amended that color to make it not seem so coppery red. I really toned it down a little bit, made it a little bit more moody, added a vignette in, and I am actually really obsessed because this is so different for me and I had so much fun creating this image. So I hope you enjoyed that behind the scenes look into how to use a projection attachment. I'll leave links to the items down below in the description box. I think the projection attachment is such a cool way that you can introduce many more creative possibilities to your photos. Especially if you're in a creative rut and you need some inspo, using one of these will instantly add more visual interest. So if you have any questions on anything I've covered today, please let me know and leave them in the comments.